Welcome to the RSP Cast. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. This week, we are going to be talking about James Brooks. What made James Brooks great? And yes, he was great because if you look at his career, and I'm looking at things like yards from scrimmage, all purpose yards, James Brooks had three seasons in the top 10 in yards from scrimmage and three seasons in in all-purpose yards. He's 41st in in all time with 14,910 all-purpose yards. And what's amazing about James Brooks, kind of like Tiki Barber, he might be the pre- predecessor for Tiki Barber. Interesting, they both wear number 21. James Brooks' career really got going as a runner later in his career. He had a... Um, 12 year, excuse me, a 13 year career. And his, his second 1000 yard season, his best season came at age 31 with his second team with the Bengals, 1,239 yards, seven touchdowns on the ground, 306 yards through the air, 1500 yard season with nine touchdowns as a 31 year old. And he followed that up with an, a 1,273-yard season and nine touchdowns. Think about that. Most running backs are done, and we're talking at that age. And in this era that he played in, in the in the early 80s to early 90s, a far more physical era of football, he saved his best for later in his career. So we're going to talk about what made James Brooks great because I think – when you get a chance to see it, this one play is a very good example of that that I'm just showing you right here if you're watching the video. He was a spectacular receiver that you could use out of the backfield. And they line him up at fullback. They have him run a sail route. The ball's thrown behind him, and he tracks the ball so well to be able to turn back shoulder, breaking in the opposite direction, and turn back, fully extend for the ball, make the fingertip grab with full extension of a ball over him, and still be able to torque the body like a receiver and win the ball by basically turning away from the ball so he doesn't land on it. We're going to watch it one more time here because it's a fantastic play. And the fact that you could line him up outside in the slot, tailback, You can use him as your fullback, have him leak out here as a matchup problem, and to be able to turn to the outside shoulder, expecting the break on the sail route, and then be able to make the late full turn adjustment in the air, full extension to make a catch and come down so that you can turn away from landing on the ball. That's high end wide receiver type of stuff. And, you know, as I'm watching highlights of games and parts of games that that I see on YouTube, one of the things that you would see over and over again or listen to over and over again is just how much the commentators from there also liked Brooks. And one of those guys was Bill Walsh. In this particular game, if you go to YouTube to find it, it's the, the Bengals versus the Chargers here. Bill Walsh says during the game, I have no idea why or how the Chargers let Brooks get away from them. And that's for sure, because when you look at Brooks's career, he was he was perennially an 800 to an 1100 yard um, from scrimmage guy, split almost down the middle as a rusher and receiver many years. He you know he had he had before he you know left for Cincinnati. Well, actually, that wasn't right. What I just said. He actually had more like 800. 800 yards was his best year from scrimmage. It was once he was in Cincinnati that he was perennially some, you know, within somewhere between 15, 1,200 to 1,500 yards um, for five of the eight seasons that he was with the Bengals, you know, from basically age 26 through 31 or 33. So, you know, let's take a little bit of closer look at Brooks and what he brings to the table in addition to his receiving skills you know brooks was a smaller back he had very strong burst and good deep speed but you can see he runs with excellent pad level for being a skinnier back 
And you can see that when he cuts downhill, he maintains his track. He drops the pads well. He's able to, you know, maintain a good lean with high knees. He runs tough through tight quarters. This is very reminiscent. He is the pre predecessor or the precursor to Tiki Barber, late career Tiki Barber. And you can see that, you know, he runs outside and inside very well. He's willing to be aggressive. I like this about his game. Like, he'll leave his feet finish, get compact, attack with his pads, and, and be the attacker. Smaller backs who attack first tend to break tackles and win. And when you can, you know, have a head-on collision with Junior Seau, where Seau's coming from the ground and you're in the air and drop your pads down into him, I mean, you're lighting a guy up. Seau's slow to get up. And now we know what happened to Junior Seau over the course of his career. And it's sad. And this was a tough, you know, this was a period of time that the NFL understandably had to change the way its game was. And this was one of those plays that looked like Seo probably got knocked out on his feet here um, based on what happened. But when you're talking about being the aggressor in the contact, there's some concepts that still carry over to a tamer version of football today when it comes to you know, making sure that you be the attacker, that you dictate contact. He could run gap or zone. And when you watch him in gap here, you're going to watch him on a counter play here. And he does a very nice job being able to work with his feet and really adjust his stride, get the knees up, and then maintain that stride and show that burst to get past defenders. And as you can see, he finishes with a blow. He's always dropping those pads. He's always running tough at the end. And this is one of the reasons why when you get a guy with good burst, with a ability to maintain your track as a run you know with with the scheme and finish strong it makes sense why you're going to be a guy in your 30s having a 900 yard a 1200 yard and a an thousand yard season as a runner between the ages of 30 and 33 we're going to see it again that he's the first to attack here's a play that goes to the edge and you're going to see the Pursuit coming down the line, and he drops his pads into the much larger defender first and forces the defender to have to slide off that contact and wrap the feet, and that's just not going to work out. Now, when he gets you know, head-on contact or pad-to-pad -pad contact with a larger defender who gets a cleaner shot, yeah, he's going to get stalemated against a linebacker. But if the linebacker's hitting from an angle and he can drop the pads first... You can see what happens here, right there. And because Brooks was such a good kick returner, he was great on draw plays because he understood how to attack downhill. He was fearless with taking the ball north-south on draw plays. And that helped him get the final, you know, five to seven yards on plays where a lot of runners that I see at the collegiate level and, and even in the pro level try to veer things east-west once they get through the, the front seven. But Brooks, straight downhill. That's what made, that's what's made really Cordero Patterson a very good running back now that they've switched him is that he has that returner mentality in traffic. Hit it downhill, be Another thing that made James Brooks great as an overall football player and a very good runner, if not a great runner, was his ability to transition from an east-west or outside track to a downhill track with minimal steps, to do it quickly, to get on that track without a lot of wasted movement. Watch this. We're going to show, they're going to show the replay, and you're going to see him come into the picture just as he's beginning to make the transition off the edge behind all-timer Anthony Munoz. Yeah, having Anthony Munoz is a great help, but we can think of all the great running backs in history, and most of them, most of them, not all of them, had great run blocking. Now watch this transition here, right here. One, two steps, maybe. Maybe two steps. I think that was more of like a one-step transition, and you can do it at a nice um, pace to be able to get downhill without really breaking stride greatly so that pursuit catches up with you. Take it right about here. He just glides downhill like that. 
Again, watch Brooks, the old school football player, accelerate into contact against the safety coming downhill right there. Leonard Fournette, a much bigger back, does this, and he's a rarity in today's NFL. But watch Brooks at the end of this run one more time as we get there, and you're going to see him work around the right edge. And what he does is he leads with that forearm, and he accelerates into the contact against a safety, one of those bigger safeties coming downhill. And when I talk about being like a wide receiver on the field, Brooks said his idol was Charlie Joyner. Charlie Joyner, the possession receiver for the Chargers who he played with during his first three years. You don't see James Brooks split wide left or in, or on the wing or in the backfield here. He's actually lined up at wide receiver on the right side and runs a curl and is open on the curl, breaking back right there. Talk about a weapon. Talk about a guy who could be that chess piece that you could adjust to play on any part of the board. He was the queen of the chessboard, basically. Here's the route. You're going to see him outside. Dives inside. Does a good job settling underneath. It's actually not a curl, but he does a nice job settling underneath. The only thing that you watch with Brooks that I see noticeably about his game that I would offer a criticism, but obviously he had a great career and it shows you that if you can consistently do something productively, that it's still, you know, that it can be still a a worthwhile thing, even if the technique isn't strong. And we're going to see it here in a second. And that's him actually catching the ball underhand with a target that arrives above the, the waist. And you can see that he consistently uses underhand technique with high targets where you want to use overhand technique. And he traps the ball. But he's always been able to do that and win as a receiver. And he obviously had a long career being able to do it. Not ideal, but it worked for him. A competent NFL starter at running back, especially between the tackles, has to be able to at least stalemate a defensive back who's coming downhill at you. And look at him stalemate him. He doesn't get knocked backwards. He's able to work through at least some of the contact to fall forward. That's the, the baseline of what you're looking for. And he does that very well. And then when he can get into the secondary, watch this against Bubba McDowell. Drops the pads, and he always could use the pads as a weapon. I've said it again, you know, multiple times in this. But watch how he drops the pads, uses the pads as a tool to be able to knock the defender down to the ground and then continue on his feet and force other defenders to have to make the play. I'm going to show a close-up of this. You can find this, of course, at my um, YouTube channel or on my site, www.mattwaltmanrsp.com. You see him drop, lead with the forearm, drop the pads and be the first one to do it and just the aiming point onto the top of the shoulder and back of the defensive back and force that defender to the ground the timing the placement all there and one of the underlying things about his game aggressive he hits creases decisively he has no hesitation when he sees a, a hole he recognizes where the holes are going to be he knows where his double teams are going to be. And when he reads those keys of where the defenders are and what's going to work, he does not hesitate. There's no tentativeness to this guy's game when there doesn't need to be. And there's a lot that we can learn from with Brooks is that he could run gap plays. He could run zone plays. He could run pretty much every style of blocking inside and out. You can have him starting from a receiver position. He was a player that, despite his size, because he attacked first, you had to wrap him. If you didn't wrap him, he was going to break through a lot of reaches. And he would, because he could hit you first, he could prevent a lot of wrap-ups. Because he could run routes and he could work the intermediate ranges of the game, you could use him outside, you could use him in zone coverage, and he'll read the coverage the same way his quarterback would. You know, he could run tough inside, even for, you know, smaller back. I mean, you can see here against the Dolphins in short yardage, just dropping the pads, 
winning against defensive backs, shedding hits, multiple hits, and winning direct and indirect contact, you know, as a tough finisher. And that's something that you wouldn't expect from a guy who's kind of a skinny-legged looking wide receiver type out of Auburn who won a lot at Auburn on option pitches as that outside guy. But you can see here from the tape that we just showed that he can run inside outside and that he was an extremely smart and versatile player who played physical football and knew how to be physical for his size and have a long career doing it. That's what makes James Brooks great is the it, all those qualities. And he's a player that I think gets overlooked a lot in terms of how good he really was. And when you look at the stats, I mean, again, this is a back who at the end of the day, you're, you're talking about a player who, you know, looking at it, career yards, all-purpose yards, 14,910. He had two seasons in the top 10 with kick returns. He had, um, in terms of yardage, he had two seasons in the top 10 in kick and punt return yardage. He was, um, and, a, and yards per punt return, top two seasons in the top 10, yards per touch, average for his career, 5.6 yards per touch, six seasons in the top 10 in that category. You know, he had two seasons in the top 10 in rushing and receiving yardage. His long run plays, five seasons in the top 10 where he had career, he had long rushes of, of plays of 48, 61, 56, 65, and 56 yards. He had two seasons in the top 10 in rushing touchdowns, four pro, pro Bowls. You know, he was 63rd in his career in rushing attempts. That's where he currently is, actually. 63rd. For a guy who many would consider a scat back, who, you know, his listed height and weight was 5'10", 180. 5'10", 180. So think about all the things I talked about with the physicality of his game. And he's listed at 5'10", 180. First round overall pick. You can see here, tracking the ball, catching as a receiver. He could do, throw the ball really could do it all. He was a you know, he he was a modern day running back with a throwback physicality to survive in this game. I think James Brooks could have played in any era. Thanks again for listening. For more RSP Film Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room. For more what made them great, this is a new series. You can check it out there at YouTube or, or on my site where I have some written commentary as well. And of course, my podcast and all the available outlets where you can find podcasts. We'll continue to do these as we go. I've got my own personal favorites list. We did Jim McMahon first, James Brooks second here. Let you know in the future who I do third.